Hello, everyone. We're going to give it a few more minutes before we hop on into this wonderful conversation. I'm excited to be here with our students today. I also want to let everyone know that as this is a webinar format, our attendees, um, your cameras are not on and you are muted later on when we have a Q&A um, session, you will be able to raise your hand and come on screen and hopefully engage with our panelists. I know they'll love to hear your questions. I see our wonderful PA president, Kim Everett. And I am going to fade down on our music. Good evening. I still see more participants coming in. Elizabeth and Missy, whenever you all are ready, Okay. Just let me know, okay? Perfect. I think, let's go. This is gonna be wonderful. I'm ex so excited. I'm gonna turn down our music and we are ready. Good evening and welcome to Carolina Day Schools PA Present Series. Tonight, our topic will be You Belong, Student-Driven Equity and Inclusion. Our presenters tonight are Elizabeth Garland, who is the Director of Community Engagement and Alumni Relations, and Missy Sullivan, Middle School Counselor. Ms. Garland and Ms. Sullivan work together to lead and coordinate the school's efforts in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. We are delighted that you could join us tonight. Ms. Sullivan and Ms. Garland, I'll hand it over to you so we can get the meeting started. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. So as we begin our presentation today, we want to take a moment to look at our mission statement um, because that is really a driving factor of what we do here at Carolina Day School as our equi equity, inclusion, and belonging. Um, Again, our mission statement is to inspire students to become innovative thinkers who communicate with intelligence and clarity, create with vision and purpose, and act with courage and compassion to confidently make a meaningful difference in the world. We will definitely be talking about our mission statement and pointing back throughout our presentation on why this mission strives and drives what we do here in equity and inclusion. So uh, just a reminder, I know you're anxious to hear from the students and we want you to hear from them because they have great things to share. But just a reminder that when we talk about diversity, um, you can see here, these are like the, the big eight, what we call the big eight or the main social identifiers of age, ability, class, gender, um, and so on. But there are other ways in which we may identify. Um, they may be related to our geographic um, location, um, our family of origin, our political affiliations, the languages we speak. There's so many different ways um, in which 
these elements of our identity inform who we are and how we operate in the world. So as we talk about equity and inclusion, it's really important that we talk about what is equity and how does it differ from equality. So equality is starting from the same playing field. Um, and we all know that that is not something that happens and nor do we want to make everyone start at the same pace. Um, I really love Carolina Day School because we are not just trying to teach a cookie cutter approach and allow each student to really find who they are and acknowledge their background and where they come from so that we can meet them where our students are. So again, instead of looking at equality, we are looking at equity and how can we make sure that we all are treated equally even though we're in different places in our background and um, who we are and our identity. So I love this image because if you'll look at equality, that's saying that you're all starting in one same space. Um, but as we know, uh, we do not start in that same space and we need to acknowledge that. And so it's really, how do we build it up so that every person has a seat at the table or um, a place in our classroom and um, we will continue to talk about that in terms of diversity and diverse learners because we are all diverse. So one of our students, um, Corinna Shaw, she went to SDLC last year when we attended um, in Seattle and she um, said something that was so profound, which is belonging is a fundamental to our sense of happiness and well being. To me, it means being a part of something bigger than yourself and being surrounded by people who understand and share something with you. So, here at Carolina Day School, I know that we stopped looking at um, what can we do to fit in but really we want to achieve belonging and what is it that we need in order to get to that space? We'll continue to talk about that in a second. So diversity matters. There, is, there are de decades of research um, to show the importance of diversity in a lot of uh, places and workspaces and also in schools. Um, the research shows that people from socially diverse groups um, are more innovative than people from homogenous groups. And it's not just that they're bringing different um, experiences and different perspectives, um, but they're also forcing the other people in the group to think about different, um, that come up with different ideas, to think of things differently and see things in a way that they may not have imagined on their own. Their um, diversity is very important to, um, to everyone's well being and to um, learning new things. And our philosophy um, at Carolina Day diversity, equity, and inclusion are an extension of our mission. Um, as we showed you earlier, and I think we'll look at it one more time. Um, this is a direct extension of our mission and our core beliefs. As a um, community, a learning community, we are committed um, to cultivating a culture and policies um, and resources and curriculum that offer our students a variety of experiences and perspectives. So equity and inclusion at CDS. Our curriculum goal is to provide windows and mirrors. So new viewpoints is a window Mirror is a reflection of your known experience for all students, all community members, parents. We want to aim and foster an environment that we understand both similarities and differences and celebrate them, not just acknowledge, but celebrate them. We want to make sure that students develop the skills to think critically and engage respectfully in civil discourse. And we also wanna make sure anyone of all abilities can access, engage, and school resources and information. 
So again, that is a direct tie to our mission statement on why we want to create innovative thinkers, to create with vision and purpose, and to act with courage and compassion to make a meaningful difference in the world. I um, have to say that I graduated in 2009 and since returning to Carolina Day School and being a part of um, watching the upper schoolers really take flight, um, it's been a really beautiful journey to see that our students, our alumni are making a meaningful difference in the world and um, continue to do so and how they're making an impact on their everyday life. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely hear from them when they come up. So how do we do that? Windows and mirrors is one of the, one of the biggest and best ways um, that we can show students um, the world outside their door, um, as well as a reflection of what they see. Historically, um, the world that has been reflected to them um, has been very, is in monolithic and has not shown them, you know, all that is available and all that they should understand. And so with our curriculum, um, we're thinking about, you know, whose story are we telling? Um, who is telling the story and what's their perspective and how is it different? Um, we are looking to expand our offerings in the library. We bring speakers in that can provide a different vantage point. And we um, have clubs in which students can explore different identities um, and, and those that are most salient to them. Uh, one example, um, Oops. One example that allows students to explore windows and mirrors is um, the eighth grade stories project. Um, this is the third year. The first year they were um, examining stories of migration. Um, they last year looked at stories of culture and this year stories of um, country. And it is an opportunity for them to um, develop empathy, to understand um, how someone else that may have an experience that is different from theirs, um, how their experience informs who they are and how they move in the world. It's also a great opportunity for them to practice um, public speaking and storytelling. Um, they didn't have a chance to do the presentations this year as they have in the past, but this has really been a wonderful and rich project. Civil discourse. So like I stated before, we seek to help students develop the skills to think critically and to engage respectfully in civil discourse. And what I have been able to see not only in the upper school, but our middle school, key school, lower school, is that they're having discussions. Our students are engaging in conversations. And again, we know that we're coming from different backgrounds and it's important to acknowledge that and then also still lean in, lean into the discussion, lean into something that's new, and also understand that you may not agree with everything. But again, that's a direct reflection on what is happening in our real world. And again, we can think with courage and compassion and make a meaningful difference. Um, so some of the examples in the pictures down here um, the BEAM class in upper school um, is such a wonderful example, and I hope some of our students will touch on that um, in a little bit. But also, um, again, some speakers that come in, um, our community discussions as um, our student body, just really having those conversations because we're not all going to agree, but again, to engage respectfully is a key component of that. Some other amazing um, things that I have been able to witness, um, and again, Ms. Sullivan, um, and also it's happening across our campus. So the anti-bias, anti-racist training that's happening in the lower school for the faculty and staff um, led by Lauren Evans um, and Britt Hawthorne. So it's really leaning into um, uncomfortable conversations and what is reflected in the curriculum and really being intentional and specific on what we are doing as an entire school. Um, also, the upper school faculty and staff policy review. So um, this group came together 
and wanted to really look at the policies um, in our upper school and are they equitable? How can we um, add more perspectives onto the policies and procedures? And I am excited because our student uh, leaders will be helping with that process as well. You belong suffers. So uh, unfortunately we haven't been able to do that um, this year just because of the pandemic, but um, we actually did have a You Belong uh, holiday stories and celebrations, which was wonderful because um, sometimes I don't know how easy it is to make a connection over Zoom. But what I found was that I left um, that evening feeling so full and it was beautiful, it was enriching, it was warm. So creating space, um, and also, we have a You Belong advisory board. And what that means is um, it's analyzing policies, pr uh, creating programs, working on um, building up discussions, and again, having those difficult conversations. And what we're doing is having that parent engagement as well. So. We have a student advisory board, but we also have a parent advisory board that will help us um, engage our parent population uh, while also having the perspectives of our students um, at the center, at the core of what we are doing here. We um, have a lot of great affiliations. Um, the National City Project is, is not something that's happening this year, but something we have done in the past and we're looking at doing with parents. Um, it's a peer-led um, professional development opportunity for folks to, um, that wanna seek equity and inclusion um, and greater diversity um, in their schools. So we've done that two years with faculty and um, it's on hold right now, but looking forward to doing that perhaps with parents in the future. We um, look for opportunities for our students. Um, you'll hear more about um, our biggest conference um, in just a minute, but we also have some conferences in this area. Um, the North Carolina Association of Independent Schools, um, a few schools that are close by in Charlotte put together a great conference for our middle school students. Um, and we love participating in that. And we also have the benefit of the Western North Carolina Diversity Engagement Coalition, uh, coalition here in Asheville. A lot of great um, schools, I think AB Tech, UNCA, um, Mission, not Mission anymore, um, Dogwood, um, a lot of organizations um, in this area are part of that and they um, provide some professional development for our faculty and staff as well. And so as I just mentioned a minute ago, um, Two of the National Association of Independent Schools um, flagship conferences are the People of Color Conference and the Student Diversity Leadership Conference. We've had faculty and staff attending POCC um, for several years now, and this uh, was our third year to have students participating in the Student Diversity Leadership Conference. Um, and Kylie's on here and she had an opportunity to attend that uh, event in person. I know that was super special and just they have enormous growth there. They just come back like bubbling with information and enthusiasm. Um, this year um, we had four students where there's five, six of you that participated. Um, three of them were with us tonight, Margaret, Zach, and Ellsworth. They um, participated over Zoom, but I know that they have um, found it to be a really meaningful experience um, nonetheless. And I look forward to letting them share some of that with you. All right, so I am going to introduce our speakers for this evening. And I know that we had two students that needed to um, have this evening away and and so we miss them but I know that our students here are going to continue that um, conversation. So we have Kylie Landoffy who is graduating this year um, and actually attended SDLC the first year that we went which was in Tennessee, Knox, 
Phil. Okay, yes. And then we also have um, Ellsworth Sullivan, Margaret Bourne, and Zachary Phillip, who gradu or is graduating in 22-23. And um, they attended this year over Zoom. And so I am going to have them start to tell you what SDLC meant to them. All right, so I'm going to start. As Ms. Garland said, I'm Kylie Landolfi. Um, I'm a senior this year and I attended the first year that students got to go. So SDLC was one of the most impactful few days of my life. Um, it's really hard to explain because it's such a unique experience that there's really no words to actually um, voice the impact it's had on me. The one thing that I can, or the few things that I can say um, is that I went to SDLC knowing that I wanted to be an activist, knowing that I want things to be equitable, I guess, um, not equal. Um, and, but I didn't really know where to start. And I think that SDLC really just gave me the opportunity to not only surround myself in people who have the same drive as me, but also gave me the opportunity to sit back and listen to all of these stories of all of these people from different backgrounds that I never even imagined. It's just like, it's hard to explain, but it's the best feeling to know that you're not alone, but in the same sense, you can sit back and listen and you don't have to try to fix everything at the moment, but you can hear what you have, like what I can do to help them, which was really, I think the best thing that happened at SDLC for me. When I asked this question, the first thing that came to my mind was just like the mass sharing of ideas that happened here. And we had all different kinds of people come together all under the same roof for one thing. Um, and the like greatest thing I learned is to use my platform as a white male and my knowledge to inform and help others um, that don't have my platform um, to enable them to be activists and make the change they wanna see. Uh, and the greatest lesson that I think I learned from SDLC was uh, to call people in instead of call people out. Like often as teenagers, we want to bash ideas and opinions and identities. But SDLC really taught me to embrace those things, not just tolerate them, but embrace them and allow them to use their uh, differences as an advantage. Hi, my name is Ulsworth Sullivan. Um, and I attended SDLC this year, and I'm also a part of the Student Advisory Board. Um, it's hard to pick just one thing <laughs> that shifted my perspective in SDLC because it was absolutely life changing. Um, but one of the biggest ways that SDLC has shifted my perspective is in how I view my identity. At SDLC, one of the first exercises we did was called the Identity Molecule. Um, and in the identity molecule exercise, we looked at the eight core cultural identifiers, um, which were talked about earlier. Um, those are socioeconomic status, race, ability, age, family structure, gender, religion, and sexual orientation. And we used these to create a molecule, yes, just like in chemistry class, to describe us as a person. My molecule describes what makes me me. What is central to my identity and things that I think about all the time, as well as what I don't. Initially, race was not at the center of my molecule because as a white person, it isn't something I have to think about unless I choose to. However, upon further discussion and thought, I moved my racial identity right to the center. Why? Because my race dramatically impacts how I can move throughout the world. It determines my socioeconomic opportunities, my relationships with others in my community, my abilities, and more. If I'm not aware of how my racial identity influences my own life as well as the way others can move throughout theirs, I become complicit in the systems that oppress people of color because I'm not able, because I'm unable to identify my own privileges. The first step in anti-racist engagement is noticing internally. For me, this is noticing my privileges as a white person. Without knowing how I benefit from society's structures and expectations, how can I be a true co-conspirator? Um, the, I actually also had a similar thing happen with me. Um, we did a similar activity 
actually at SDLC in Nashville, um, where all of those identities were po posted up on walls. And then we were told to go to whichever ones we thought was like the most important to us. And it was really cool to see that the thing that you might have thought was the most important to someone wasn't. And it also opened my eyes to knowing that um, diversity is more than race. I am a diverse person. I'm a white female, but I also have dyslexia, attended the key school for four years. I am bisexual and I have so many more important identity um, structures inside of myself that I had to, like Ellsworth said, um, understand before I can try to help and understand other people with what they need help with, so. Uh, SDLC changed my perspectives. Um, so I could really understand what white privilege was and the role it played in society. Um, this is not a topic I had explored much until SDLC and it was really on display at the Capitol riots and we uh, saw white privilege in action. So it's been nice to see the transfer of knowledge to uh, real life events. Um, also, the, my, it changed my perspective to seek like uncomfortable conversations because diversity, equity, and inclusion work can't be done without that. And often in school, you shy away from talking about tough things and you don't like because of the social stigma, but um, it really taught us to seek uncomfortable conversations so we can begin this work and continue to make progress. Hi, I'm Margaret and I also went to SDLC and I'm also on the student advisory board. And this question, like how, what are we doing to impact our community um, was one that I had been thinking about a lot because after going to SDLC, I realized that there's so much work to be done. And before that, I was kind of complicit in my white privilege and thinking that Carolina do Day is doing a great job and we are, but there's always more work that can be done, more room to grow. And so something that we're doing as a student body and as um, a school is, for me, it's most one of the most important things is creating spaces for uncomfortable discussions. And so like Zach was saying, after the Capitol riots, we had an impromptu discussion where we got insight from teachers and then we were able to talk about it and really share how we were feeling and it was uncomfortable but it was also very necessary and very helpful in understanding that and um, this past Friday for um, MLK Day we talked about different questions about diversity and what it means to be a part of a community what it means to do anti-racism work and so having that conversation was really important and so something that we're doing as a student advisory board is really imagining ways that we want to help grow this Carolina Day community and imagining ways that we can get into those uncomfortable discussions. And we really are trying to work to spread our ideas that we make up in the high school to other divisions. Hi, again. Um, so, Something that um, like Margaret was talking about that we're doing for the school community um, is I think being really honest about what's going on at CDS now and how we can improve and make changes. Um, and so, as I said, I'm part of the student advisory board um, and we're working alongside this year's um, SDLC members as well as previous members. Um, to engage the community in diversity, equity, and inclusion work. Um, and I have personally participated in discussions on DEI work and current events, like Margaret was saying, um, we had a discussion about the Capitol riots, which was much needed. Um, uh, current events in the community um, to help, I've also helped prepare for and lead discussions with my peers, which has been really awesome. Um, and specifically, um, the student advisory board is split up into different committees, which you can see on the slides here. Um, and so one of those is generating awareness. And as a teenager, I was thinking, well, what's something that 
teenagers look at all the time that could maybe help um, influence them and help them learn something. And that is Instagram. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have teenagers <laughs> and you know that a lot of them spend a lot of time on their phones. Um, and one of the major social media apps is Instagram. So um, myself and two other members of the Student Advisory Board have been working on an Instagram to display resources, opportunities to engage in the community and promote critical thinking, um, and as well as create a platform for other students to share things like artwork and writing. Um, my overarching goal for the future is to create a community in which discussions around diversity, equity, and inclusion aren't only normal, but are also expected um, and seen as being equally as important as our academic studies, um, because I believe they are. Um, and so that's what I've been working on in the CDS community as of late. Um, but there are also many more groups in the You Belong Advisory Board that are working on things like parent and student outreach, like the kind of thing we're doing here, um, as well as discussion forums and more. So I'm just really excited to keep chugging along. I have to jump in to, to follow uh, what Ellsworth just stated. Um, and it's been amazing to create the Student Advisory Board that um, allows our students, um, those who went to SDLC, really help foster this leadership, um, but allow all students who wanna participate in making change and creating um, a space. Because again, exactly what Margaret said is, I, I underestimate the power of creating space to have these conversations. And today, um, some things that came out of our meeting was absolutely beautiful of just saying, you know, the discussions that we had last Friday, um, they were needed, they were great, but how can we intertwine them into our environment so that the conversations do get easier, so that you do know each other in the classroom and that you can um, easily lean in and call people in. So I, I'm truly excited to see where this group um, continues to take this. And, um, and our students have done a lot. I, I want to go back onto what Margaret said and, and add in that our students have led these MLK discussions every year and we're trying to get out of the habit of having heroes and holidays and not just having these discussions when it is a Dr. King um, celebration. And so also um, having activities that happen in the upper school, um, but how does it trickle down into the middle school and lower school at our youngest learners? So who would like to start? I can go ahead and chime in. Um, on the, so the first, three days of SDLC were used just to educate yourself and learn like get uh, closer with the people in your group so you could really understand their experiences. Um, but then the final day, we used that time to uh, start an action plan that we could bring back to school that was like attainable and realistic and small progressions building up to a bigger goal. Um, and we've already seen this in use. One of the things for the Carolina Day kids that I know we had on our action plan was just more discussions. And we already had one on um, the Martin Luther King celebration at school. And it was a really productive conversation that we uh, brought, brought in some of the kids from the high school. And we uh, had a meaningful discussion about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And a lot of these kids didn't seem uh, interested in the work at first. But after, like, after maybe 20 minutes, we got into the conversation and some really meaningful conclusions were drawn. Yeah, I think just tagging along with what Zach is saying about the discussions. I know it's it seems kind of like a broken record to be like discussions, discussions, discussions. But I think that what Miss Garland was saying about how the more we have these discussions, the easier it gets and the more we can learn from them um, is really important. I know going into SDLC, I was a little bit nervous. Um, but one of the biggest things that I took away from it is leaning into discomfort um, because that is how we learn and grow. Um, and so I think that having more opportunities 
in class time um, and during the school day to have those discussions as well as weaving them into the curriculum. So it's not kind of like a little thing off to the side that like you can come to if you want, but it's not really like necessary. Um, I think that having it in the school day as a part of our um, normal curriculum um, will not only make it more engaging for students, but also make it more of a normal conversation to have. And I think a lot of students are very nervous about talking about these things or um, don't do it a lot. Um, and so I think that being able to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion on a regular basis is going to be able to um, help shift students' perspectives and keep us engaged in it in the future, even outside of CDS, the CDS community. Something that I learned this past December at SDLC was more of, was more of like, an awareness about some of the things that our edu like that our education provides us in terms of anti-racism work and some of the things that we learn. And so something that I learned at SDLC is to really challenge the things that we're told. And so like in history class, like if you hear one narrative, you have to think about it in terms of a diversity perspective and just trying to shift the way that you view things, especially in our education, which is something that I find really valuable because it helps you learn and helps you grow when you challenge the perspective that you are getting your information from. And so that was really valuable. I think that um, something that I have learned at SDLC and then taken back into the Carolina Day community is to just bring up diversity as often as possible, like they are talking about, um, and just like allow people to understand themselves in a diverse manner. Uh, for me, I was actually afraid of starting diversity work because I felt like I was trying to force my way into a community that I had no part in until I went to SDLC and I realized that everyone, like I said before, is diverse and that everyone um, has a place in the, com the diversity community, which isn't a thing because that's just the community. I think that it's really important to just remember that and allow students to hear that as much as possible. And I've said that many times in front of the upper school community and a few times um, in front of other communities like the key school um, and just to be here and be a resource if people have questions or have any kind of needs in the diversity kind of. <laughs> I've got one more point here, Ms. Garland, before the next one. Um, like I said earlier, one of the biggest things we learned was to call people in and not out. And this work is really difficult with a few people. And I know the SDLC kids, that's just like 10 kids in the entire high school, but the You Belong advisory board, we've already seen grow. Like today we had our most, we had 20 something members. So we can already see like the incorporation of other students and other identities and perspectives and ideas into the community to uh, make more progress. Yeah, I would like to just add that the enthusiasm that our SDLC delegates bring back to school, to campus, um, you know, from their experience there, that enthusiasm is contagious and other students, faculty, staff, they want to be involved. They want to do more. They're really inspiring a lot of positive change on campus and just so grateful to them for that. Yeah, so this question is a big one that I, again, think is super important is like, what can our school and adults do to help us out in this DEI work? And the first thing that I thought of is to really listen to what we have to say, because we are the students, we're benefiting from this education and we're the ones living in, um, we're the ones at Carolina Day, we're the ones learning and living and doing all of that. And so listening to what we have to say is really important to make our experience as healthy and as impactful as possible. 
And a big part of that listening aspect is providing spaces for us to have discussions. As previously expressed, like what Ellsworth said, we sound like a broken record, but it's really, really important. And it really means a lot to be able to talk about it and to teach people and to learn from other people. And another big thing that was that I experienced that was really helpful after the Capitol riots was when adults provide insight and knowledge about history or about their experiences. That's really important. And that's something that an adult perspective really helps with. So that's what I have to say. I, I want to intertwine what you just said, Margaret, and, and when you said your health. And I think when we bring in these buzzwords of diversity and equity and inclusion, it feels like it's a one-off or social emotional learning is a one-off, but they're intertwined. And when we add that, so if we add equity and inclusion and belonging plus your social emotional health, we're intertwining it for it to be academic excellence. And that's what we're striving here at Carolina Day School. And that academic excellence goes directly and is tied to our mission statement. So anytime that we forget on what we're wanting to do and who we're wanting to be and how we are student centered, we've got to keep that at our forefront and say that it's not just a one-off. It's not a conversation that happens afterwards. It's something that just happens every day. Um, and I know if, if any of our other students would like to hop in on that question, um, feel free to do so. And then we are about to go into um, some Q and A in the next few minutes. I would tag along on what Margaret said. I think, um, I think it's important for the adults and the teachers to recognize that the school is for the students. It is a building that we go to to learn. Um, it's a community that we learn in, and I think creating safe spaces, especially um where people feel ready to engage in difficult conversations um is really important i also think that not just talking the talk but walking the walk per se um i think when students come forward to teachers about things that we're concerned about or things we want to learn more about um for the most part for sure, teachers are really receptive, um, but I think that sometimes students feel like either they aren't like, I guess, a, a high enough level to like confront their teachers about things or they um, they just don't feel like they're going to be heard. Um, and so I think creating relationships with teachers where we feel like we can talk and action will be taken um, to improve our education and help us learn about the things we want to learn about that will improve our life and the life of others down the line. I have one more thing to add on to that. Um, I think that like um, Ellsworth and Margaret said, the teachers have a lot of opportunities to help us. But I also think that since y'all are parents, um, one of the most important things I have seen um, that parents can help with is just to allow their kids to have an opportunity to grow in a way that you might not quite understand, but also like we need to be able to grow without constraints for a while, especially in these diversity um, ways. And because it can be hard when your kid has a different opinion on things than you do um and vice versa it's always hard when you have disagreements between people but i think that allowing children to explore all the ventures of all of the different kinds of um diversity it, it's really important just to open that space <laughs> thank you kyle All right, so 
as we go in, um, I'm, we are going to open it up for questions. Um, and as I do that, um, I am going to look at Ms. Sullivan to see if she has access to the Q&A. Yes. Well, um, you should be able to raise your hand and um, we'll see that. If you raise your hand, you want to ask a question and then you can speak and I believe we'll be able to see you unless you have your camera turned off. But um, you can pose a question in the chat or you can raise your hand. I did have one question in the chat about how um, students can participate in this. And it's an opportunity that's available to our ninth, 10th and 11th graders. Um, they typically apply in the spring um, because registration begins early in September and then the conference happens uh, right after Thanksgiving usually. Um, I don't remember where it's going to be next year. It, it usually bounces kind of back and forth between East Coast and, and West Coast. Um, but yeah, and, and then as you can see, when the students that do participate um, stay engaged for quite a long time. Let's see, my son else in the chat. Yes. Yes, um, Ms. Whitney wants us to know that um, some of these students, as well as some of our other student leaders, um, did uh, speak last night to the board. Um, and that was right after they spoke um, at the lower school division meeting. They had a busy afternoon. Um, that, was, that was fantastic. Um, they shared a lot of what you've heard tonight and, um, and also um, had an opportunity to answer questions from the board. They were really engaged and interested in what they're doing. We'd love to hear what questions you all have. I, as you look um, and, and see the questions that are popping in, um, I have to say as an outside, um, individual watching your growth and and Kylie I've been able to watch your growth because you went your sophomore year um, and you have been participating in everything and leading the social justice club and facilitating difficult discussions and I've seen how those the facilitation has gotten easier over time which I absolutely love um, have you been able to keep in touch with anyone from your SDLC experience? Yeah, um, there is a group chat that I'm on, on Snapchat actually. And every year um, on, when the conference starts, there's a little bit of discussion about how it's going this past or this next year because some schools let their students go multiple times. And so they just update us on that. And then also every time um, a school has a big like either um, questionnaire or just something they would like our input on they add it into the snapchat group chat and then we all just respond with our answers or we look for our emails and make sure that we do all the things that will help these other students at their schools I think it's really cool <laughs> yeah like um, I experienced that I follow a bunch of SDLC people on Instagram and one girl posted like a Zoom link after what happened at the Capitol. And she was like, if I know a lot of SDLC people like swipe up if you want the Zoom, the Zoom link. Um, and they held a space to talk about what happened. And that was really valuable because it was a bunch of different perspectives. I was one of two white people there. Um, and it was from different schools all across the country. So we could compare how our schools responded to it which was really valuable. And those different perspectives really helped me just get a grasp on what had happened. And so that was really, really great. Okay, we do have some, um, some questions in here. Um, do students have the ability to have conversations with students from other Asheville area schools, both independent and public? You want to jump on that? Yeah, elsewhere. Um, so not yet. I we have had I think one of our 
I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Scarlett, but I think that one of our um, Race in America discussions, we had a few people from other schools, um, but one of the things that we had been talking about in the student advisory board is creating spaces to have these discussions with people from other schools, um, kind of like any SDLC in Asheville, um, which I think would be so awesome because uh, I've been here my whole life personally um, at Carolina Day, I mean. Um, and so I think getting to know what's going on in other schools in Asheville um, and how other students are feeling, what they're doing, what their ideas for the future are, um, I think that'd be a really great way to um, get different ideas floating around, um, also learn about other people's experiences, um, which is like what we were doing with SDLC. Um, so something that I definitely want to work on in the future, and I think it's something that um, we're going to be tackling in the Student Advisory Board. Thank you, Ellsworth. Um, we have a, um, a parent family, I think, says our family extends gratitude to all of the panelists and Student Advisory Board for being change agents and for creating compassion and hope. Um, oh, okay. And then yet another parent has asked, is it possible to have um, like a guided Zoom discussion um, with parents about um, relevant events such as um, the riot? <laughs> I think they would like to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think they would like to do that. Let's see if we have anything else, any other questions? Yeah, we, yeah, the parent, uh, the, <clears throat> the student forums um, last summer went really well. And we also had some faculty and staff forums and we would love to open that up um, to parents. And I'm sure you would love to hear from students. Any other questions? Y'all can raise your hand. You don't, um, you can put your question in the chat or you're welcome to raise your hand. We can unmute you. I have a parent saying that they're watching with their eight-year-old Wildcat and um, so grateful to have this community of student mentors who are building this space that um, he can later participate in. Um, by the way, he asked if the illustration in a previous slide was that of John Lewis. And that was actually Brian Stevenson, who Ms. Garland and I had the um, distinct privilege of uh, seeing speak, was that in Atlanta? It was in Atlanta or Seattle. Um, and uh, he actually visited UNCA. Um, he has a special on net. Is it on Netflix? Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. And he actually popped in this year to the uh, People of Color Conference as well. I don't know if our students were able to see him this year. No. He was funny. <laughs> I do know that this wasn't a question, but a part of that comment um, was about helping the wildcats who are younger than us um, is something that we're working really hard to do. And I'm very excited about is engaging not just the upper school um, and the middle school, but creating um, discussions and education in the whole school um, so that we're starting um, working on this D DEI work with the little ones too. Um, so I'm very excited about that. I know, I think we were planning on, um, something for MLK day. We didn't end up getting to do it, but was reading to the lower schoolers. Um, so things like that, um, engaging the whole community, um, and being able to, um, participate with the younger kids too, I think is really exciting. That was something that we talked about a good bit during SDLC during that week as a um, school, like as a school little group. And we had that discussion a lot with Ms. Evans, the lower school principal, about how this work starts early. And when you 
provide spaces for younger kids to talk about it. They're prepared to be agents of change in the high school, which is something that we really want to see happen. If I may. Yes, please. This has been an incredible evening to watch these young people step in and step up and lead us through what we would call a crucial conversation. I think you also know that this kind of work has to be endorsed at the very top. It is a push in, it doesn't stop, it's a starting point. It's always a starting point because we can do better each time. So I just want to say that it's such a pri privilege to get to work with them. Um, I'm so proud of their willingness to push the envelope, to take risk, to get into each other's shoes, to bring a community along a pathway that's hard to follow. And there are pebbles and there are chasms and there's huge rocks. But at the end of the day, there's community. And our school is about community. And Ms. Sullivan mentioned that last night, a group of young people got to speak to the Board of Trustees and it was a very tight agenda. And the kids were so compelling that they needed more time. And we came away feeling proud of what our Carolina Day School students do what they care about and how they can help us as adults and their classmates push this forward. So the board isn't here, but I am. I care deeply about this work. I'm so excited about what we're gonna to get to do next and it's hard, but knowing that we have this kind of leadership in the student body and at the adult level, um, I just wanted to make sure that you understand that this is, this is a priority and we're excited to work together with you. Thank you, Miss Whitney. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, so we're at 645. I wanna make sure that anyone that has any other questions they wanna ask. Now y'all probably spend a lot of time on <laughs> Zoom during the day. Um, so I don't want to don't want to hold you here, but um, and if you have a question that comes up after tonight that you think of, you know, certainly reach out um, to to Elizabeth, uh, to me. I'm sure Miss uh, Miss Whitney would also be ha uh, happy to receive your questions and and um, hear from you. So, anything else that you want to share? And. I just have to say, I love the idea of the students leading um, some informational or, or discussion time with our parent population um, and engaging in that way. Um, so that will be something that is discussed in our advisory board. And they, I mean, they are working really, <laughs> I am just amazed. We created this in November, I believe. And since November, it's like, okay, we're meeting, we're doing this, we're doing that. Okay, are we ready? <laughs> so, and they, they still are involved in clubs and homework and um, engagement. So if, if I, I know we're at 647 and I wanna respect our time um, here. So Ms. Sullivan, do you have any closing Closing words? Um. Um, no, I don't, but I, I did hear someone say, you know, they never tire of hearing our students' voices. And um, I would echo that. I am I am inspired and motivated um, when I when I listen to them and, and see what they can do. They're making the world a better place for sure. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And our school. Yes, for sure, our school. All right, well, um, I guess we will, um, yes, we, we do have a recording of this event.
Um, so if you're talking to someone, they go, oh man, I wish I had been there. I'm so sorry, I missed that. It will be available on the website. Um, and I don't know exactly where, but I'll help you find it if you call me, <laughs> but it'll be there. And, um, again, reach out to us at any time and, um, and don't be a stranger. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Have a great Thank night. Thank you. Good night. All right. Let's see. So, we've got Mr. Coburn and Ms. Malika and us. All right. Um, okay. Let's see. I could not talk. No, you did great. No, and I did fine at the end, but when I was trying to talk about you know, diversity and belonging, I was reading my notes. And I was like, oh my God, I think it was the same thing on the screen. Um, no, 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 no. Okay. I was fine. It's like, yeah, it's really good. One of those mirrors is good. So y'all should like. <laughs> yeah, it was wonderful. Of course, that we're doing that. Anyway. Um, yeah. I think we have one more parent in here and we have another attendee. It looks like Katie's here, but um, I bet she's, she's had to probably walk away. Okay. Um, um, well, so if you'll stop the recording. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I guess I should have done that.